Red leather, text. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. The human torch had oddly shaped feet. <laughs> the like, arsonist. I thought the arsonist oh, no. is the oddly arsonist shaped. Who's, what's the human oddly. torch? He was denied Isn't a bank loan. The, the arsonist was denied a bank loan. Fox no, 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 no. Over the, ri- the brown fox, the quick o- brown fox, fox jumped, jumped over, over the, the red river. Oh, I'd, I'm not sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all ill, ir, ill, ill, ir, damn it. Irrelevant. I used all my good enunciation on the opening lines from Anchorman. I'm out. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye. Just kidding. Well, I did listen to a Paul Rudd interview, uh-huh. and they, the, the dude asked him straight up, like, what was his favorite line from the movie way back when? Which one? Uh, Anchorman. Oh. Paul he's, Rudd. Well, he's been in so many ma- wonderful movies. Clueless. Right. Paul Rudd. Anchorman, favorite line, that was his answer was, milk was a bad choice. (laughs) You know, I'm going to disagree. When I hung and drank beers with Paul Rudd back in my Kansas City Chiefs days, he was a big Chiefs fan, and he went out and had beers with us at a local bar with me and Will Shields and the guys, and he said that the line that killed everybody that even broke Will Ferrell on set was 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah, you and can't pick your own line. He and, Will, and then Will Ferrell looks at me, he's like, that makes no sense. That was him. That doesn't make any first sense. Take. On, on the first take, and then he just kept rolling with it, and he and like he was like they were in tears. So they had been ta- rewriting their lines to try to spoof each other, and that's why the stuff was so off the wall. Pop quiz, hot shots. What's the name of the cologne? Sex, Sex Panther. Panther. Oh, Easy. Thought, okay, my <laughs> bad, my bad. <laughs> what does he say? Smells like gasoline. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest. It smells like pure gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish this was an Anchorman episode, but it's not. It always could be. Maybe next time if someone would call the hotline, ladies and gentlemen, you're just do another crew episode of the Premier Podcast in strength and conditioning. Ing, I just had some really hot coffee. Hot coffee. Hot. Oh. Hot coffee. I'm not used to that. Ladies uh, and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. You're a big ice cube in the coffee guy. Oh, uh, gosh. Just one big cube. <sighs> big cube was my nickname in uh, grade school. That's right, people. The hotline is open. We are taking text messages. We got a couple texts on the line that were not texts. Text-s-s-s. You, way to enunciate. text says on the line that we're going to cover in, or today, one of them. Uh, but leave us a voicemail. Leave us a text message. The hotline is open. We want to know what you want to know about. And we will let you know what you want to know when you want to know it. That number to the hotline for Power Athlete Radio is 929-464-4640. 929-ing. Ing Have you zero. been listening to a lot of Chicago Talk Radio? Because you got your Chicago Talk Radio Boy, down. He's in Pat. 24 hours, he's going to be with the boys. Mm. Oh. Mm. So his, he's mm. practicing his I've accent. I've also had house guests that are pretty thick in the Chicago accent as well. The in-laws. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Mrs. Packy, much mm-hmm. more than Mr. Packy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, and then Ashley even falls into her family speech patterns. It's very interesting how easily that, like, who, when you surround yourself with... It's kind of like herpes almost? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, like it goes away and then you get reinfected and it comes back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, Te- ladies and gentlemen... Text, you seem kind of quiet. I'm just blowing on my coffee. Oh, jeez. Just drink the hot coffee. Dude, you have to kill all the nerve endings in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you got the hottest mouth coffee. Too? You got Tic Tac mouth? You and Nate Austin, twin brothers of uh, having this sensitive mouth. You know what you do? You take the hot coffee, you throw it in there, and then <laughs> you burn everything. <laughs> and then at that point, you can drink the hottest coffee in the world without problems. Tex, this is science. But then you can't taste anything. Uh, For, that's why you get spicy sauce. Yeah. Hot sauce. It's kind of like you've seen uh, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Remember yeah. when he's like, those guys, they work in the coal mines. Oh, they got to put hot sauce. They can't taste anything. And then it shows them like <laughs> farting. And they just start dying. <laughs> That's a funny movie. That, that would is, be a good movie. I remember, remember when you saw that and you're like, this one had me roaring. I'm like, BS. Watch it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the like question. Like when he's doing like the, uh, the shadow and he's like, oh, I didn't even know we knew each other this well. And he's like... <laughs> Like it looks like a shadow's blowing him. So we're going to get into our text message question from... How lazy are these people that they have to text us? They just I can't even call? I think texting is harder than calling. But I'd like to hear the emotion, the thought. Mm-hmm. Like I want to I wanna know who I'm talking to. Text is just so... Impersonal? Impersonal and sterile. That's okay. It's not their fault. You know, I think texting is harder because you got the... You got to like well, reread it. it. You can't, like, 
Maybe it's, it's too co- many, too much revision on. Maybe text. it's COVID, and they didn't want to spread COVID, so they were going to texting us instead of leaving a message. It's possible. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Long story short, for mm. the record, that's how the text message starts. That's oh, not okay. my. Ne- that's not my line. <laughs> the problem You're, is, it's long story longer. Longer. That's Luke's line. Long story longer. Long story short. <clears throat> Let me get my question reading voice. Long story short. Just kidding. Um, I can't seem to maintain a quote. Healthy long-term regimen, unquote. Uh, when you do the quotes, you got to put them by your head. Okay, okay but I, like if they're listening, they can't see. But if you're on YouTube, you'll see that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've been in, quote, great shape, quote, about five times in my 38 years of life. Detail number one, 38 years old. Then I fall off the wagon and fall back to where I am right now, which is 5'8", about 228 pounds. I'd like to be near that 200 pounds range in terms of body weight. I'm very muscular. I've got a 48 inch chest. Count it. Parenthesis. 48. I max bench 365 at 23 years old. So in parentheses. 15 years ago. Yeah. Still he's, counts. He's count it. Count what? it. 15 years ago. Okay, NFL guy. <laughs> you were just talking about like 15 years ago, Paul Rudd and you. Drinking uh, Michelob Ultras. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I didn't talk about the fact that I was repping five. You know, yeah, I repped five hundred pounds. Yeah, how big was your reps. chest fifteen years ago? Don't um, answer that question. Probably, I don't know, a hundred. <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that did I break it? Okay, back to the question. So my man here, Max Bench three sixty five, commendable at twenty three. I just want to say that I did Max three sixty three at sixteen years old, but um, no big deal. Those numbers. Do not fact check that text. <laughs> uh, I have a spare tire that he can't get rid of ever. He's a type one diabetic, by the way, and he injects insulin into his stomach region, which is why he thinks he has that spare tire. No excuses though. I want to get rid of the spare tire. Uh, what would be a good reintroductory training program for me? I'd love to get back into jujitsu, into backpacking, and into but. Cardio has always been my weakness. I gas out early at jujitsu many times a session. Also, in your programs, do you provide and offer any dietary advice? Is there a specific program? Is Uh, there a specific program that you would recommend? Thank you, Carl. K A R L. Carl. Good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. All right, so. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. This I mean, guy's new to yes. power athlete, right? Yeah, he's new to power athlete. What did he say? He was 5'8", what? 5'8", 228. 228. All right, that's pretty heavy for Damn. Um, man, there's a but lot. But he's of, very muscular. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. The biggest one, uh, the age, and then the type 1 diabetic. So uh-huh. uh, back in the day before they actually figured out what type 1 diabetes was, they called it wasting disease hmm. because uh, regardless of how much people would eat, they would waste away in front of your eyes. And they ended up figuring out that it was a lack of insulin. So then they started supplementing back with insulin. Uh, I've been fortunate to work with some type two, and I mean a lot of type two, but actually a decent amount of type one diabetics. And we found that there was a few things that were an issue. One was uh, being able to match up uh, the proper amount of insulin with you know their carbs and like kind of what they're eating. But the big one really came down to uh, like how much insulin they had to use. We found that if they just lifted weights and they did a ton of aerobic, big aerobic base type of work, uh-huh. and they didn't put themselves into like glycolytic shock, like right. really a ton of like stressful metabolic conditioning, then the amount of insulin that they needed w- based upon checking with a glucose meter ended up decreasing. Uh, we did some dietary stuff where we actually ate a pretty – legit paleo diet on it you know um everything was uh you know uh like carbs were from you know sweet potatoes but it was basically meat and fats and just really like kind of a traditional rob wolf paleo diet and um just looked like lifting weights and building a big aerobic base and every one of those people we had leaned out and did very very well so uh some things we had to really reduce i mean uh you know we ended up cutting all the alcohol consumption which was another big one Mm -hmm. so um i think so what's that like what does the spare tire tell you like isn't uh, i know paulo has his bio sig stuff and there's like a little bit of efficacy to that right it's not totally it's where it's where people store their fat you know men predominantly store fat like around in the gut and kind Mm -hmm. of in like the low back and we've seen a bunch of you know new dads that are you know sleep deprived and a bunch of stress start getting the dad the, the back fat uh, usually that spare tire 
is more a function of, uh, you know, some insulin sensitivity issues if you look at the Pollockman stuff. Yeah. So, which would make sense with type 1 diabetic. Um, I think with people that are type 1, there becomes a very, very small margin of error, and especially for what he's trying to do. He's obviously uh, spraying a lot of shots. Uh-huh. I mean, if he's, uh-huh. you know, uh, 38 years old, he's 5'8", 228, which is... Uh, a little Dense. bit more than I, w- yeah, but I, I, think, I would like for him to be. I mean, yeah. if he was 5'8", like 200, uh-huh. it would be probably yeah, that, a better place. Which is what place. he wants to get to, yeah, right? To be 200. But dude is like, for, is for a smaller dude, I guess 5'8 is small, no offense, Tiny. Dex. But because um, you're what? Five, it's a nine? wee man. You're what? 5'6"? Five, 5'4"? Five, Keep going lower. By or, fruits? You're, or <laughs> high school football program? <laughs> high or school. No, but uh, in all seriousness. On your Tinder profile. Let's, if, you're, if you're benching over 300 pounds. Yeah. And you're like a, a shorter dude. You're probably like a stockier dude. Is that fair? Or do you think he's like power lifter big? You know. Uh, you know, to quote uh, my good friend uh, Paul, uh, lift run bang. Um, most people that lift weights or most power lifters are usually like thirty to fifty pounds over. Like they they always think they're like ten to fifteen pounds to be jacked. It's more like fifty. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so they have like, to lose. Yeah. Like they think, hey, if I just lose fifteen pounds. Yeah. Like there, there's all like I'm fifteen pounds away from being shredded, and then when they actually like, try eh. to get it, they end up losing about fifty. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I bet you he would probably be feeling a lot better. The other thing too is uh, fat's extremely oxidative, mm-hmm. so it's going to be creating more and more problems. I think the lower he could get his body fat, the less insulin he would need. Um, he didn't talk about his diet stuff. So if it was, if I was, if, if he hit me up for personal coaching. First thing I would do is he would just do a, a basic program, um, mm-hmm. you know, very similar to Jack Street. Uh, I would not put any like a ton of timed uh, kind of AMRAP type stuff in there. Right. All of his accessory work would be like 90 seconds. We'd give him a little bit more rest. Um, I would have him doing some form of aerobic work. Uh, would, would look like either walking on the, um, you know, with a heart rate monitor, hit a bunch of target stuff, like a bunch of, uh, what is it, the map stuff would be really good. And from there, I would just have him... Uh, use something like my fitness pal or you know whatever of the uh, the different apps to chart his calories yeah. so we could figure out exactly how much he's eating and, and he'd and also have to get a glucose monitor he'd, right? he'd have a glucose monitor so he would have to fine tune what happens a lot of times is i think people just like hey if i take you know f- uh f- you know, five IUs of this or 10 IUs of this, they just consistently hit that amount. Yeah. Cause that's what I do. It's like my, it's my dose Yeah, versus being able to check your blood sugar before and after. And it gets kind of, but I think what you almost have to do is refocus it and say, mm-hmm. all right, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out the training piece. I'm going to figure out the aerobic piece. I'm going to figure out the food quality piece. And then I'm and then the last piece, I'm going to figure out the total caloric, like how much food I'm eating. Uh-huh. And I'm going to match that with the energy requirements based off of the, the blood work or off of uh, testing your blood. Should he change one of these things at a time or is it a wholesale approach? Uh, as you guys know, I don't like wholesale approaches. I like to make one tweak. So the biggest one we need to do is get him into a training set. So like if he's following Jack Street and doing some aerobic work and kind of taking some adjustments, I'd say, okay, that's our first two weeks. And then over those two weeks, I would just I would not give him any dietary stuff. I would just have him start charting his calories so then we could look and say, okay, this is how you've been eating. Do you think that this is the smartest way for you to attack it? I think this is a better way. Shoot him a list of foods and say, these are the foods I want you to eat. And then once he shows me two weeks that he can eat these foods, then at that point I would start looking at like ta- uh, you know tackling the total caloric load, the macros. And I think I, in terms of Jack Street too, because there is some like glycolytic – days on sure. that so you'd have to be where wherever that so the glycolytic days would look like you know like a triplet you know uh three movements five sets minimize rest in between movements and it's going to be something that's going to be a higher heart rate so but he could those, wear a heart rate monitor in, right so there's like two yeah. options there right you yeah. either like what you could do is just drop down that intensity and recover a little bit in between those sets to make sure it's more of an aerobic type of mm-hmm. session. Yeah, so or like, you could like just 70, for- 75%. Yeah, or you forego it all together and just say, all right, I'll hop on a bike or go on a walk on that day Well, with I, that less the accessory work. I would want to still have him hit the accessory work in Jack Street because I really think uh, when I look at the Jack Street program, we hit like, it's kind of like a big meal, man. Like we always are putting a bitch and big steak out there that's mm-hmm. cooked perfect, medium, rare. Um, and then the accessory work is where we can really get our volume. So, I mean, we get a lot of really good quality movement in Jack sure, Street sure. where we get and we're able to hit that, let's say, 20 sets per body part a week. I mean, where we really tack on that uh, that volume is in the accessory. So, I, I, I would not. I'm thinking like Saturdays. So, you know, on Saturdays, sometimes yeah. there's like the kettlebell burndowns or anything like Wouldn't that. Wouldn't do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, 
I would have him, I mean, I know you're wearing a Phoenix. I'm wearing a Phoenix. Uh, we both do our heart rate stuff. I would keep him around 70, 75% of his heart rate. Uh-huh. And I would have him do the accessory work. But if it got up too much, I'd have him cut the sets and I'd have him play it and just be like, all right, hey, we're going to build a big aerobic base. We're going to try to get you in some long, slow duration type of stuff. And we're going to have you lift weights and get real strong and uh, make some tweaks. Um, the people that I've worked with that were type 1 diabetics, as they got leaner and they started changing the food quality, all of a sudden they started needing less, uh, not as much insulin. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden when they started, you know, everything started kind of trending in that direction, they started leaning out and everything started looking better. The So for our listeners who are wondering about, well, what's where's this nutrition advice come in? So no, we don't have any necessarily canned nutrition advice that are included and packaged with the programming, but our nutrition coaches are on the feeds and do yeah. answer nutrition questions. For this individual, I would not recommend a template. I would recommend a coach. Right, because it's he's more working, nuanced. Well, yeah. it's nuanced because he's working within a type 1 diabetic. I mean, a lot of the templates and some of the basic stuff we do is kind of that bell curve, middle of the bell yep. curve. Yep. You know, as you're an outlier, as you start dealing with an autoimmune disease, or mm-hmm. not necessarily a disease, but more of an autoimmune issue like type 1 di- diabetics, um, the distinction is uh, for type 1 that the insulin is no longer being produced in the pancreas, so it stops. Right. Type 2 is your body is insulin uh, no longer insulin sensitive. So the body's still pushing out. It's just not reaping the benefits. So, um, one is kind of a, you know, diet, almost a condition that you do to yourself. This one just happens. For, yeah. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. Two, two is the one that yeah. you do to yourself. Yeah. So yeah, if you overeat and you do all the other stuff, you mean people become insulin, uh, not insulin sensitive. That's type two and they can regain insulin sensitivity. Type one, we're, we're just, you, you got to work within your, yeah. so do you think then, the, I mean, it sounds like the BJJ is probably working against his goals because he's going to he's going to be in that glycolytic space and that's what's going to burn out. Right. Like that's that burnout he's feeling isn't necessarily aerobic. Yeah. Well, but it's like a lack of glycolytic capacity. Well, um, it depends on how he rolls. Yeah. Fair um, enough. You know, I mean, uh, the guys that I've seen, the, the best jujitsu individuals in the world I've seen are, you know, cool and calm as a cucumber. Yeah. But those are my here's my just guess. And doing literally rolling like three times with Drew Ski is like, okay, if you're five eight and you're a three hundred and fifteen pound bencher, you're probably not a wiry Rob Wolf like flow guy. You're probably going to be a try hard rip them apart guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you're probably that's probably why you're burning out. Is number one probably efficiency. Number two, you're tapping in. You're not tapping into the right energy system. So it's like. I, that's a total guess but, uh, but based off takes, of my N but, equals one experiment. But that takes uh, years of experience. Like the the guys that I would roll with back in the day that uh, were really good, man, I would gas out and they would like not even have a bead on their forehead. The reason being is like a bow constrictor just kind of laid back, let you make something move uh-huh. and they just... Yep, match tension, match the, yeah, like, the force. So, but if uh, he's using it as skill work it's important that he takes it a different approach that try hard go after it mm-hmm. that's gotta, gonna work against him yeah. versus the, the e skill work yeah. lock and key and then the backpacking too i think you got to work work your way into it if you like again monitoring mm-hmm. that heart rate get yourself a chest strap uh don't rely on the wrist or the forearm or the bicep uh either the chest yeah, it's either chest, chest or the ring, I think, is what we were we, we yeah, learned. So we, we found that for the um, most accurate heart rate. Yeah, the Garmin with the chest strap is mm-hmm. dramatically more accurate than anything out there. Uh, the Cora ring, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they do the ox uh, ox meter on the finger, so the Cora ring I know works really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So those are pretty good. The uh, with that said though, now there's an interesting thing, Tex, to the behavioral. Uh, what was your degree in? Health behavior change. Health behavior change. Let's not forget that he can't seem to maintain a healthy long-term regimen. Yeah. What's up with that? These five, I did have a question on the five times in my life I've been in shape. Well, shouldn't it be your one, like your life? But uh, Yeah, so to wow. me, that's what's that indicative of? Extreme, all pull, no holds barred, extreme pull everything out and crash into this. Well, what does that versus, mean though? Like uh, that, I mean, as he said that, I always Nate think Austin, like- Luke's bachelor party. <laughs> If <laughs> he looked great, Super Bowl. Yeah, let me tell you, he. Uh, I don't know if he'll ever reach that peak again. Oh, poor Nate! I'm going to text him. Tell dude, you uh, like he, uh, dude. When For he the showed up, yeah. when when he showed up at your bachelor party, and 
I mean, came in looking great. The look on Ben Oliver's face, because, you know, Ben uh, Ben and Nate used to train together, and he used to make fun of him that he looked like he was wearing pampers. Yep. And he showed up shredded, mm -hmm. and, like, Ben yep. was like, yep. So Nate Austin is one of our buddies. He's been around since working with John since forever. John was kind of his mentor into this lifting weight space, and he's always been a doughy dude. He is bedrock. Yeah, he's so the bedrock. Linear progression. Yeah, he was the test pig. case for, for, for bedrock. bedrock. And uh, anyways, we're close friends with Nate, and... Nate's never been in like he's never been in like terrible shape. He was doughy out of the gate, and then he's gotten like this is this is Nate now. Instagram Dos Clinic yeah. One. Uh, yeah. He was a he was way more jacked. But the funny part is, he yeah. comes to this bachelor party and he's going here to show all of these dudes up who really do not care. And he was so he starved himself so much and had he was no so energy. Dehydrated. He just napped the whole weekend well, while we all had a fantastic time. Well, the problem was he was so dehydrated yeah. that he had like. A beer and it ninja blow darted him. Yeah, for, he, for 72 hours. Yeah. <laughs> he did make it out to a gentleman's club and had a nap dance. No, I was the nap No, dance. he was a nap dance. Well, I, I know because I paid. There's two nap dances? I, I paid for Uncle Dave. Not Uncle Dave. Cousin no, Dave. Oh, Cousin Dave. <laughs> cousin I paid Dave. for Cousin Dave to have a dance while Luke napped next to him. So no, no. You fun. paid for Cousin Dave to pay for me to have a, 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 a nap you, dance. A young lady. You don't uh, even remember any of this. Listen, John, I'm t I have sources, but keep me company for a little bit, a song or two. You know, I'm just looking for a little company, get to know you, that type of thing. So in terms of this, this like these spikes and wheeling out, would that say that uh, that would be an indicator, I would think, McQuilkin, that whatever approach he's taking on these initiatives, this crash is probably why he, he can't manage the diet after the diet. He has to kind of go into this with a plan of like gradual progression, be patient, and the goal is to get to a point where there's another plan, right? Have a plan. Like Lane Norton said, I know he's kind of a squirrely dude and maybe isn't most aligned with a lot of the ways we think and speak, but no, he just, the diet after the diet was like a really s simple and easy way to like call out the huge loop in this behavioral change gap. Yeah. Is people get there and don't know what to do then. Well, in the behavioral change cycle relapse is a part of it yeah but then it's determined how the the pieces you put in place your actions uh -huh. and i refer to it as scaffolding like the the uh what is constructed in the building when the building falls over what's left is the scaffolding so it's determining those actions and i would argue it's more of your it should start with your surrounding like who is your influence circle of influence right who are you staying with, living with? Who are you training with? And it sounds like he's got jujitsu buddies, but anything outside of that we didn't receive. Right. But if they are, and this is why, and we talked it on the Jen Wiedershin podcast, the biggest loser folks fail as soon as they go back to, to their, life. their social circles and surroundings, they get hit right back into the behavior patterns that are... That got them there in the first place. Exactly. Well, um, it's kind of an interesting piece, man. I think... Uh, the part that always struck me is like, hey, I've been in shape five times. What is that in shape? Like, what does that look like? Like, Probably I mean, this goal. No, yeah, but, well, no, but pounds, nobody ever looking pretty good. It. So like, okay, like, hey, if my goal, if, if uh, a number on the scale is your only requirement for being in shape, then I think that's a broken deal. I think for him, he needs to create a new marker for the best shape he's ever been in, which looks like, Bench hey, press. at this point in my life, this is the leanest I've been. This is the healthiest I've been. This is the least amount of insulin. Like I'm at the point where I'm managing my type one diabetes mm -hmm. with uh, uh, you know a minimal dose of insulin. Uh, whereas you know because um, you know the more the body fat goes up, the more oxidative, the more stress, the more they kind of need it because uh, the body's not working as efficient. So I think being able to say, hey, I I've been eating this much. I've been eating this way. Um, I know following that standard you know paleo diet has worked really really well in the past. I'm lifting weights. I'm consistent in my training. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been working on, uh, I, I have a talk that I'm doing for the flexi guys and in it, uh, you know, as we've pulled, I mean, what, I know we pulled it a couple of years ago, but we've programmed like 12 million workouts or something insane. Delivered, not yeah, programmed. Yeah. Delivered over 12 million workouts. Something like that. Yeah. And within that, that, the people that are the most consistent over the longest amount of time are the ones that have the greatest chance to reach their goals. Mm -hmm. So, um, the problem we're seeing with this is it feels like, um, you know, if you're 38 and you've only been in shape five times, then you have these kind of interesting peaks and valleys. And it probably feels like every three or four years, you kind of, oh, I'm not feeling good. I got to do something to make a big change. Well, and this, this plays into two things on that one. 
before we get into good stuff, I always love the Ed Wellborn quote where he was like, I'm never not going to be out of shape again because getting in shape is the worst. <laughs> yeah. Something along those lines. Well, and, if you had been there in the early days when Eddie and I started CrossFitting and uh, the, the look of death face on his face at all times, and I remember him being like, he still goes five days a week because he's so fearful. I mean, not fearful, but just he remembers what it was like to be out of shape, and he's like, I'll never let it happen again. Which yeah. plays into my next point, the importance of how you write a goal. If it's just a weight or just a number, once you get there, then what? Mm -hmm. It's important that you write a goal and have it where it, it continuously puts you on a process of progression. And if we're 38 and we're, we're looking at 40 years old, and you, if you're able to maintain said bench press weight or said body fat percentage or specific goal, then you are still progressing even though as you get older. So that'd be an example of a goal that you're always striving towards that is representative versus a strength number, a weight number. You get there and you feel dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. It was the process, the walk to get there that makes it a realistic goal. So it, it needs to be, he needs to, in my opinion, rewrite his goals so there are in that way. I appreciate the smart goal model, but at the same time, it needs to be something that is always and becomes a behavior and action for you versus just a marker that you hit and then what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else for our guy, Carl, K-A-R-L? I think we're pretty good, man. I just uh, recommend if he is really, oh. really serious, uh, he needs to hit up and, and hire one of our nutrition coaches to really take him on this journey. Um, it's tough to, to go out into the wilderness like Aaron Snyder and go out and, you know, slay a big elk and drag it home. Sometimes you need an amigo, you need a friend or just somebody to check in with. Yeah. I, I know I do this, like, um, you know, I have people I hit up, you know, periodically, not only on questions, but Hey, what do you think of this? I mean, you gotta have a sounding board and it's really good to have somebody like, a you know, Ben or Sam or any of the guys that we have working for us in terms of the nutrition coaches, which are super spot on our block one network. Uh, to be able to take you on this journey. And I think if if you have some accountability uh, with somebody who's checking in, making sure that you're doing what you're doing and laying it out, I think you have a greater chance of success. And another way to add on to that is the Jack Street feet are very active yeah. and very positive. Not, not a lot of dick punches. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. if Carl with a K... Is on Jack Street. Is on Jack Street. You in the can feeds. talk. Yeah, there's people on there who follow the the coaching, nutrition coaching. They're going to tell you how it is. Yeah, uh, Jack Street is super positive. Uh, Hammers become pretty positive too. Uh, I feel like the people on on Field Strong are really more no nonsense. No, it, it is performance based. You post your lifts, you get direct, dramatic, direct feedback, mm -hmm. and you apply, and then we progress. Uh, Bedrock is an educational feed. Dudes that are interested in questions or video lifts, and it's a lot of teenagers on their journey. So that's yeah, a fun one yeah. as well. Yeah. So there you go, ladies Thanks, and Carl gentlemen. Do you, do you think he needs to like parallel that with advice from his doctor as well of as course. a type 1 diabetic? Like, I don't think before embarking on any exercise plan or any nutrition protocol, mm -hmm. you should consult your doctor. Okay. Well, that's <clears> – <throat> I just wanted to get that out there because sometimes common sense ain't so common in this era. And we are not – Doctors. I am not a doctor. Doctor? Are you a doctor? I don't concur. I, you can, well, you, if you concur, you're a doctor. The, uh, the, um, but, you know, text did stay at Holiday Inn. Back off, man. <laughs> I'm a scientist. That's a Ghostbusters quote. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another episode of the Premier Podcast in Strength and Conditioning. If you have questions, uh, we got answers. All you got to do is hit up the hotline, baby. Text or call. I mean, if you don't want to upset the big guy, call. Leave us a message. 929-464-4640-929-0. Now it's time for you to empower your performance. Head to powerathletehq.com backslash training to choose from a number of programs to meet your specific performance goals. And if you like to break a mental sweat too, visit academy.powerathletehq.com and become a real stakeholder in you or your athlete's success. Until next time, bye!